today we have a lot to go over and we're going to be going over personal and diversity statement workshop. Um, this is, uh, this is going to go over kind of the, some of the materials you need. Um, and we kind of pulled all you folks uh, and asked what topics you were uh, most interested in learning about and personal and diversity statements was the top one. Uh, and so we uh, were happy to give you guys a workshop on um, what you are interested in. Um, and so in just a few minutes, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, or perhaps we can get started now, I think 5.03 and um, folks can trickle in as we do the intro. So with that, I will uh, pass it along to Elena and uh, Claire to go ahead and get started when Claire comes back. Okay, Claire's back. <laughs> awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to our first workshop on personal and diversity statements. I am Elena and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm Claire and I also use she, her pronouns. And we will be facilitating the workshop today. So this series is facilitated by a group of PhD students here at UC Davis in the population biology program. You'll see them on this call sometimes along with some other grad students and postdocs who are serving as mentors. Um, so anyone who is helping out today as a facilitator or mentor, can you give a little wave? Thanks, so got some friendly faces. They're going to be answering your questions in the chat and kind of helping you out in the breakout rooms that we do later. So this is a calendar of all of the different events that we're doing during the program. As you can see, today we are on Thursday, the personal statement workshop. Um, and so today we'll be talking about how to craft personal diversity statements. And then on Tuesday, we'll have a little bit more information about this. And just wanted to point out that on Thursday, next week, we'll have office hours. So you can take what you learn here and bring drafts or outlines to office hours, and we can give you feedback on what you're working on. Uh, so just as a reminder from last time, um, this is just a 90 minute workshop, so it's just an introduction, but we'll give you some resources so that you can keep exploring uh, past the scope of this workshop. And we all are doing our best to advise you, but we are peer facilitators, we are PhD students, so um, we offer a lot of different perspectives, but we are just, just here to help you along the way. So in this workshop, we'd appreciate if you could keep your video on. Um, we understand that sometimes you can't and that's totally fine, but we do have an ask. Um, we also appreciate if you'd stay muted unless you're speaking. And then if you have a question or comment during the session, don't hesitate to raise your um, virtual hand or type in the chat. Um, and as we said last time, if you have a question, it's likely a lot of other people have the same question. So please don't be shy. And then last, we hope that you will be respectful and curious, and we understand some of this might be review for some people, and certain parts be more, may be more or less relevant, but just keep in mind people are coming from different backgrounds and experience levels with this stuff. So we hope that by the end of this session, you will be able to understand the key elements and structure of personal and diversity statements and identify components of your own personal histories that you might be able to include in your statements. So just as an outline for what we're gonna talk about today, first we'll do an overview of what personal and diversity statements are and how they're similar and different. Um, then we'll do some general writing tips and share some resources. We'll spend a bit of time together um, using jam boards and interactive activities to brainstorm themes for personal statements. And then we'll go into breakout rooms um, and we'll work on workshopping your statements and working on outlines and potential themes that you could use to write your statements. Okay, so jumping right in, the names of these statements that they ask you to write in these prompts are confusing. Um, every school and every program has different names for things they're asking for. Some of them you might see are statement of purpose, statement of interest or intent personal statement and diversity statement. Um, and these tend to have overlapping but somewhat different requirements depending on the school or program. However, the statement of purpose, interest, intent, or personal statement usually all mean about the same thing. 
Um, they'll want you to talk about your past education and research experiences, what you're interested in working on in the future, and why the program you're applying for is a good fit for you. And this statement, which will be whichever statement that asks you to describe your research experiences and interests, is the one that's going to be weighed the most heavily during the admissions decisions. Um, and we'll be calling this the personal statement during this workshop. And Claire will speak more in a bit about exactly what goes into personal and diversity statements. But I just wanted to say to be sure to read the prompt and address all aspects of the prompt. Um, and one of the reasons I say this is because if you go to a website and you, I looked at this website and I was just like, kind of freaked out about it uh, because they say, disregard the guidance provided on the online application. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you want to make sure a, you go to the program and see what they're looking for. Um, so get as specific as possible, right? You want not to look at like the whole school or the department, but like the program and see if they have specific instructions. Usually this won't happen, um, but it was an example I found and I was like, oh, <laughs> you really need to pay attention to what they're asking. Um, so that's just kind of a warning there. Yeah, so like Elena was saying, um, personal statements or statement of purpose or statement of intent um, are probably, we pulled professors and a lot of professors said they're the most important part of the application when they're looking at students' applications. Um, so they're almost always required. I don't know off the top of my head any programs that don't have some sort of like essay. And usually it's just a focus on your research and academic background with the personal narrative thrown in. So if you're telling your whole uh, life from the picture of your research and your science, like why, how have your, your experiences in the past pushed you to want to do a PhD or a master's program now and how have they shaped where you are now? And then a diversity statement, um, they may be optional, UC Davis and the population biology program. And I think the graduate group in ecology also require a diversity statement and they're becoming more common, but some programs may have an optional one. Um, and they focus more on your experiences and commitments to diversity. So you can either talk about how you have promoted diversity in various groups and organizations you've been in or how you personally will uh, increase diversity at a program. Um, and yeah, and so both of them are personal narratives um, and they're both just about how your past experiences have shaped you and have your journey up until this point has motivated you to want to go to grad school. So a bit more about diversity statements, as Claire mentioned, there's two main strategies. You can talk about how you have promoted justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion in your community. You can also talk about how you overcome obstacles related to aspects of your identity. Um, and you know, for both, both of the statements or any of the statements where you have a personal narrative, I wanted to caution about statements and the trauma that might come up. So you, know, you wanna be cognizant of triggering emotions that might come up as you're crafting your statements. Um, and <laughs> so yeah, I just, yeah. There's um, this essay that Dina Elgonati wrote about how applying to grad school becomes a display of trauma for people of color. And I thought this quote was really poignant that white America asked people of color to tokenize and exploit themselves in order to gain acceptance into programs and institutions we are otherwise barred from. Um, so she talks about the feelings of self exploitation that can come up when writing these statements. Um, and I just wanna tell you all that you deserve to go to grad school, even if you don't wanna put your trauma on display. Um, and there are unique and interesting things about you besides any marginalized identity you hold or trauma you have faced. Um, and I'm not gonna lie that like largely white privilege admissions committees like to hear nice stories about trauma wrapped up in a neat bow. Um, and I definitely did some of that in my own personal essay about being adopted. Um, but this is a choice that is up to you and your story is valid, however you want to tell it. So just putting that out there. Yeah, okay, so now this is going to be a lot of text, and I'm sorry, but uh, this is the, these are the prompts, we're going to go through the prompts that population biology, the program that we're all in, um, requires in their application. I just thought that 
I don't know, you may have read the prompts before, but just so that we're all on the same page and everyone has seen what we're actually being asked in these statements, um, it would be helpful to go through them. So the statement of purpose or the personal statement. Um, so they talk about your preparation and motivation, your interests, specializations, and career goals, and your fit for pursuing graduate study at UC Davis. And then they go into depth um, more in each of these different categories. And just as a going looking through different graduate programs, when I was trying to put this together, um, like Elena was saying, if you go to the program website, a lot of times they have a lot more information on what they actually want you to write about. Um, and all of the different essays, they have like different length requirements and stuff between programs, but it is generally the same sort of content. So you can kind of reuse the same essay for different programs, but they do have lots of information about the specifics. So at UC Davis, yeah, preparation and motivation. So this is mostly you talk about your academic and research experiences and your motivation for actually pursuing graduate study. And they give a bunch of examples about how you can demonstrate this. Um, and then your interests, specializations, and career goals. So what are you actually interested in studying when you go to grad school? Um, what kinds of things have you focused on in the past? And what do you want to do? Like, why do you want to go to grad school and get this degree? What are you planning on using it for? And then fit. So um, this is an important point too. So when you're applying, you want to have specific faculty members in mind when you apply. So a lot of how, a lot of shaping these essays is you can use the same sort of structure and you can talk a lot about the same experiences at different schools because you've had the same experiences and they all apply. But at each school, you're gonna to wanna to talk about why specifically this program and this lab that you're applying to um, are the best for you at that university. Um, so mentioning it, so they say specifically to mention a specific faculty member. So having some reaching out to faculty members beforehand and having someone in mind and talking about why all of your experiences and your interests and everything line up the best with this faculty member is how they're going to assess fit. And so then this is the diversity statement. Um, and so you, once again, a lot of text, you can just click through it, Elena. Yeah. So they want you to talk about um, how you will contribute to the diversification of graduate education in the UC Davis uh, community. And you can do this in different ways, as Elena was talking about before, however you feel comfortable and however you want to go about it. Um, they're all, every, every method is valid. Um, you can talk about educational, familial, cultural, economic, or social experiences, um, how your life experiences contribute to the social, intellectual, or cultural diversity within the campus community, and how you might serve educationally underrepresented and underserved segments of society. So that's what they're looking for. If you're applying to specifically a single professor's lab based on their recommendation, do you still need to identify other faculty? I would say no, um, you don't have to if you really aren't interested in anyone else's labs, but you could also just write down a couple people who you're interested in potentially meeting with. Um, and that way they can sort of set up interviews with those folks, um, but it's up to you. One is totally fine. I would say no more than three. I think I saw that somewhere. You don't want to list a bunch of people because then they're like, well, are you really interested in these people? Or are you just kind of coming up with a list? What is the estimated length for both statements? Um. <laughs> oh, I think I can look it up quickly. It depends a lot by school though. Um, I know I applied to some schools where it was like one to two pages. Um, I remember one school I applied to, the diversity statement was like an optional 100 word statement. So um, it's pretty variable, but probably like one to two pages on average, I would guess. Yeah, I also think that it's totally valid to reference diversity and equity in your statement of purpose, especially if you don't have a diversity statement. Um, you yeah. know, and if it's important to you, it'll probably show up in both statements anyway. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, people can feel free to continue to post questions you come up with in the chat and we can refer back to it at any time. Um, if we wanna move on. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of brainstorming together. Um, and so 
we're going to ask, you know, what kind of narrative theme would you thread through your personal statement? So I just jotted down a couple examples. Um, like I read one where they talked about how natural history has become sort of underrated. It's not really a flashy thing in ecology anymore, but that's what sparked this person's interest and what they want to bring into their research. So that was kind of threaded throughout. Um, and then my interest in nature versus nurture, due to my background as an adoptee, motivated me to study interactions between genes and the environment. So that was sort of threaded throughout that statement. Um, and so I have a Google Jam board. I will give you all a link to that. And we can share the screen. Looks like you all can join, so that's wonderful. Um, so if you all haven't used a Jamboard before, uh, what you do is you can make these little sticky notes and write whatever you want on them. And then you would hit save uh, and then it would pop up here. Um, I think if you, I think you can also like write things. Yeah, oh, how do I undo that? So if you have like an iPad or something where you want to write, you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, just sort of start brainstorming and you know, you can get inspired by other people's sticky notes or what people write. Maybe some mentors can kick us off by writing down what they wrote in their statements. We also have a question in the chat. As a first gen student, I feel like people don't see that easily or think about it as a valid struggle. Oh, I think this is in reference to a different statement earlier, what Darian was saying. I actually interpreted the question as like how to talk about yourself as a first generation student. I think, I think maybe they're wondering like what's a good way to bring that up. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I suppose when I talked about myself and the things that I've overcome, what I talked about is how that sort of influenced the way I look at the world and um, sort of my values and behavior and what made me want to go to grad school and like research the things I wanted to research. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a first gen student, so I can't really say, you know, um, exactly how that would affect folks but uh, I would say you know speak authentically and like I said don't don't feel the need to you know share any particular trauma but just say this is how it's shaped my worldview um, and and I, I I do hope that people are starting to understand more the struggles associated with being a first-gen student um, at least I think you know in our program we've definitely begun to like talk a lot more about what that means. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you really want to go somewhere where they're not going to see that as like a valid experience. <laughs> um, so maybe that's a thing to consider as well. Yeah, and Sivan has a good point about grit and perseverance. Okay, so it looks like a lot of things are popping up. Is this small for you, you all? It's kind of small for me. Or if I can, can make this a little bigger. Okay, so I'll read a couple out loud. I don't really know how to make them bigger. It's sort of making everything else except the text bigger. Um, so let's see, anthropogenic ecosystems and or relationships between urban areas and wildlife. Cool, cool, very relevant. Recent wildfires have inspired me to study the interaction between post fire habitats and communities. Uh, what made me excited about learning about the environment like childhood experiences, that's a very popular one. Growing up as a fisherman impacting how I think about coastal marine ecosystem ecology. These are all so great. I love it. Relevance of climate change and how the study of biology and ecology is one way of measuring its impact. 
Nice. I hope these are sparking some, some motivation to write your own statements if you haven't had ideas yet. You all are really good at connecting your past experiences to what you're interested in. I don't know, I'm really impressed. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I feel like as scientists, we're taught sort of how to write a cover letter about our research experiences, but not necessarily how to like thread a personal narrative. So I know that that can be more challenging and we focused a little bit more on that for this workshop because of that. They're awesome. We'll give people another minute or two to, to write some stuff down and read each other's. All right. Well, I think maybe it's time to move on. Thanks everyone so much for sharing and feel free to click on that Jamboard link within the Google Docs link or in the uh, chat if you want to refer back to it. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little about structure. Yeah, shifting gears a bit, answering that question that I avoided before. Um, so I guess the take home is that there's no one right structure, um, but there are ways that I think a lot of people do it, like chronological order, if you're talking about experiences, usually is good, it helps it flow, it keeps it more organized. Um, it's nice to have this theme that we just brainstormed going throughout your essay. Uh, generally, I will say that the best way to kind of get an idea of how to set up your essay and get ideas for how to do it is to read a lot of examples. Um, so I, we sent out some examples uh, from various grad students and facilitators and mentors earlier today um, that are linked to also in the slides so you can get them later and just googling around too and a lot of examples online um, but just seeing how other people structured it I think is really like the best way to kind of get a feel for these essays um, but here's one method this is what I did in my all of my personal statements um, it's kind of just like five paragraph essay sort of style like going back to middle school or whatever, but you start out, you can start with a hook. So an introduction and you start out opening with your personal narrative, um, your theme, the things that we just brainstormed. I think it's really nice to kind of pick like a, a story or one sort of thing that you want to stick onto, um, especially in the personal statement and use that and sort of thread your ideas throughout that. Uh, and on, so in the hook, I would introduce yourself, um, say where you are in school, what your current job is, um, any important identities and uh, state upfront why you want to go to grad school um, just from the start. And then the body, uh, this is like where you explain your science, your commitment to diversity, your really your relevant experiences that you want everyone to know about um, on the admissions board. Uh, and a chronological order works pretty well for this. My essay kind of just ended up being like a a journey through my most recent academic and research and organization experiences um, in the middle. And this is good too if you, I, I remember I wrote like a really long version uh, for one school and then for other schools I would just cut out various parts of it and take out words and stuff. So you can kind of keep this the same between schools. So don't be discouraged by having to write a lot of different essays if you're applying to different places. Um, and then the conclusion, I would talk about your future goals and make sure to mention why this specific program and this specific advisor and really hit on that fit because um, that's really important in these essays to show that you have thought about where you're applying and who your lab you're applying to and that this is the perfect place for you to be. Okay, so I have some do's and don'ts of statement writing. I just tried to find some of the more common mistakes um, that people tend to make, including myself. So you sort of want to avoid making these generic statements and instead be specific and describe your experiences. And so one way to do this, which I have done with my essays is read each sentence. And if the sentence can apply to like a bunch of people, try to change it a little bit so that it's more about you. Um, and then avoid listing or summarizing your resume. This can be really tempting because you're just like, I wanna tell you all the things I've done. Um, but you're also usually giving them your CV. So they are gonna see that anyway. So instead you want to highlight some key experiences and talk about why they were important to you. So one sort of mini structure within a paragraph might be to say, this was an experience I had, this is how I've grown from it. 
and why it made me want to do X, Y, and Z things at this school. Um, you also want to avoid a long intro talking about growing up doing nature activities. Also very tempting. Um, a lot of people talk about being out in nature growing up. Um, and you know, you can still talk about this a little bit, but make sure you have sort of a concise intro and make it unique to you in some way. Um, like I mentioned tide pooling at the docks in Rhode Island, but it was like half a sentence. <laughs> so just, just limit it and try not to make that like the only narrative theme that you're putting in there. Um, and then kind of avoid oversharing. And what you really wanna focus on is writing about what motivates you to do research and go to grad school. So, you know, tell a personal authentic story, um, but then talk about how that shapes your professional background because this is still a professional statement. And then just some general writing tips. Um, keep your essays concise, clear, and free of errors. Um, you already said, be authentic, but don't overshare. Write about topics that are unique and meaningful to you. Again, thread your themes throughout your statements. And then the statements should complement but not repeat each other. So go back and forth between them and make sure you're not kind of um, saying the same thing over again. Um, we also surveyed some professors and got some quotes for them about what they look for in these statements. So. Here are some there, um, you know, talking about what the major factors that have shaped you as a person and what your ambition is. Um, again, try to avoiding that when I was a kid kind of narrative. Um, and then a good statement shows personal growth, motivation, and maturity. It, it can include challenges you've overcome to show resilience and determination. It's an opportunity to showcase your communication skills. So it should be structured like an essay and well-written. Um, and they do want an understanding of who you are, so it doesn't have to be totally formal and dry. But then of course, the next one says not too personal. Um, so it's like, you know, about striking a balance between get, letting them get to know you a little bit as a person, but also um, striking home why you as a person wants to go to grad school um, and follow this, you know, professional pursuit. Okay, and as promised, here are some resources. So there are the example statements that we sent you out, out to you before. Um, we do ask that you don't share these beyond this program. We have removed some names and identifying information, but it still is their personal statements that people have written. And um, we just wanted to give them a little bit of privacy. Um, and then we have a link to this great document of various do's and don'ts tips for statement of purposes. Um, that was written by I like professors in the admissions committee and then there's a PowerPoint so when you click on that last link it's going to start to download something just don't be alarmed it's a PowerPoint uh, that NIH put together that's a list of personal statement tips and it has some really good advice about structure too um, and it's not specifically for ecology but I, a lot of the tips still run true to me okay so now time for more questions if anyone has any, and I think it's time, it'd be good to take a couple minute break now too. So from, there's a question in the chat about, is there any difference between a personal statement and a statement of purpose? Um, so usually they are about the same thing um, that what we found in our research of all the different names out there, um, but you just wanna make sure you answer whatever they ask in the prompt. Um, and so some of them might have more of a personal spin to it. Um, for example, if they don't have a separate essay for personal history or diversity, they may ask you to emphasize that more in the statement of purpose or personal statement. But if they have two essays, they might have more of an emphasis on one versus the other. So um, just make sure you're reading the prompt. And if you can find example essays for that particular school or program, that's even better because um, you can see what other people have wrote, written, so. So there's another question in the chat um, about how far back can you go when you talk about your experiences. I definitely talked about, I think I talked about things that were more than three years out. I talked about all of college. Um, I would say, I think people say to avoid talking about when you're a kid because it's not super relevant necessarily to like what you're going to research now. Um, so I guess all relevant recent experiences and then use recent however loosely you want. Um, at least for me, when I was, a, I took a year off to work after college and then applied to grad school. 
and experiences that I had like my freshman year of college definitely still were very relevant to the things that I wanted to study um, and had shaped me uh, recently enough that it felt really important to include them. But I kind of think it's more of a judgment call. Like if if you were doing something, if you don't think that what you were doing freshman year is important, then don't include it. But if you do, then I would stick it on. Yeah, I would add to that and say that like, if you think something was important and pivotal to you, you should include it. Like I also took two years off after undergrad and I like opened my statement by talking about this like really influential PhD mentor I had when I was in high school and I was working for her in salt marshes doing field work. And she was just this like really strong female role model for me. Um, and so, I mean, it was a high school experiment experience, but I included it in there. I also think limiting it to a certain number of years is kind of an issue if you're like a returning student or if you're like getting a degree in something different than you had done before and worked a while. You know, I, I just think that's kind of like, sure in a professor's mind what might be like the perfect path to getting to a phd is like high school college phd um but like obviously not everyone is doing that so i think just speak to what was important to you and that should come across and whoever you want to work with should um sort of want to see you as a whole human person and what was important to you yeah here's I just wanted to say, um, addressing that kind of like last three years statement, um, I completely agree with everything that was just said. I think I would lean towards like highlighting or dedicating more times to like polishing that part of your CV up maybe, just because it's likely that you have more relevant experiences um, in the last few years. But again, everyone follows a different timeline. So maybe you did college and then you went and worked in a coffee shop for a bit and then you're just starting to come back to it and so maybe the last three years are not super relevant um but yeah just highlighting the stuff that's most important in your cv i think it's not a bad idea when it comes to the the timeline but yeah next session we're going to talk more about where these statements fit into the whole application um and you can also come to office hours next thursday to, to work on these some more if you want or do whatever you want at that time that's really just for you and then um, again, there are some opportunities for you to connect with us or dig deeper. So our website has more resources as well as um, the link to this slide and eventually the link to this um, video. Uh, and then we've got our Twitter handle and you can feel free to email us as well. And we have an FAQ page that you can, um, you can submit anonymous questions to on our website as well. So if you want to ask questions anonymously, that's one way to do it. All right, um, I'll leave this open for a minute so folks can, you know, give each other their different Twitter accounts and email addresses, but y'all can feel free to head out um, or if you want to remain and ask questions. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>